हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू एस टीम पी सी बी यूट्यूब चैनल माई नेम इज़ अविरल एंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी टॉक्ड अबाउट रिटर्न करंट एंड इट्स मॉडलिंग एंड सिमुलेशन ऑन कैडेंस पीस बाइस द पर्पज ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज टू गिव यू बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ रिटर्न करंट पाथ फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर इज पावर प्लेन और नंबर ऑफ पावर प्लेन बिटवीन सिग्नल एंड इट्स रिटर्न पाथ वील ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड विच पाथ रिटर्न करंट विल फॉलो अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वील ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट विल हैपन टू इंस्टेंटेनियस इम्पिडेंस ड्यू टू पावर प्लेन will use couple of simulations and modeling on cadence p spice so let's get started first we will try to understand the problem of changing reference plane in this very first example where we have signal and its return path and as we discussed in the previous video there is capacitive coupling between them Now as signal travel down the transmission line return current will flow through these tiny capacitors now in another case let's suppose we are dealing with multi layer pcb and we have introduced a power plane or floating plane between signal and its return path now we don't have any idea how current will return to source so let's talk about it but before we'll try to understand different ways to visualize return current let's recall two important points i have discussed earlier first point is for dc current dc current follows the path which has lowest resistance and then it return to source but similarly for ac current it follows the path which has lowest impedance or inductance and then it return to source these two points will help us to understand what will happen to return current if we add a power plane now let's try to understand how return current flows in this case so first method is capacitive coupling ways like a two layer board return current flows through capacitive coupling between signal and return plane underneath similarly in this case return current flows from signal layer to layer 2 due to capacitive coupling and then from layer 2 to layer 3 due to their capacitive coupling as you can see on this figure another way to think about return current while switching between reference plane is eddy current way so eddy current is a loop current which induces in nearby conductor due to change in magnetic field and the direction of current will be opposite of that let's try to see that in our three layer border in which as soon as signal starts traveling due to that there will be change in electromagnetic field which will induce loop current on adjacent conductor now same thing will happen on the other side of the source which will cause another loop current flow at the other surface of the plane and when they meet at the corner of the plane it completes the circuit now in the next step we're going to talk about what will be the effect of that capacitive coupling between planes and signal layer either it should be low or it should be high so for that i'm going to use a p spice model so as you can see on the screen on this p spice model i'm using 50 ohm 0.5 nanosecond time delay transmission line which are connected in series and here we have a step response of 1 volt which is further connected to 200 ohm source resistor and i've terminated this model with a 50 ohm resistor now here you are seeing couple of more transmission line so you can imagine that as a plane underneath this signal layer so this is our 50 ohm signal layer and underneath i've created a very less impedance plane which has almost zero time delay and another plane that you can imagine on this model is ground plane which is here so i'm talking about coupling between signal layer which is this capacitive coupling which is 10 nanofarad here and plane underneath and then coupling between plane and ground plane which is c10 so everything will change when we vary c8 and c10 on these two waveform so this is the current waveform of signal and here you'll see the return current which is going back to source all right so this example is low capacitive coupling between planes so what what should be the expected results of low capacitive coupling first one is impedance discontinuity so if there is low coupling there will be high impedance which will cause so in case of impedance discontinuity we'll see reflections on the line now 
out of these two wave form which one has more reflection obviously the second one has more reflection compared to this one all right so let's see the results so as you can see this is our low coupling capacitor model and we can see so this is transmission line which is on the signal layer so green waveform is little bit stable but blue waveform has so much reflection on the line due to low coupling now let's see the other example so I've created another model and here I have increased the capacitive coupling to one microfarad from 10 nanofarad. All right. Due to that increment in coupling, the current will be flowing from signal layer to power plane or plane underneath and from that plane to ground and going back to our source. So due to this, there will be very less impedance discontinuity and which will cause low reflection so let's check out that as well so as you can see and this is the time delay that we have introduced as you can see green is the waveform of our signal and red is the waveform of return current through capacitive coupling and you can see the clear difference there is more reflection on return current due to capacitive coupling and this is our signal return current all right and there is also some reflection because we have added plane underneath we'll try to understand that in more detail what will will happen or what driver will see when we add a plane under the signal layer all right so from that we got to know the capacitive coupling between planes should be higher or you can say there should be tight coupling between the planes and signal layer Right? So then we'll get more positive results compared to the low capacitive coupling. Again, I would recommend just play along these values, either change the value of capacitance, change the value of time delay, impedance, add more transmission line on this model and see what will happen on the return current waveform. I will attach this project. You can download it from description and let me know in the comment section in case of any question. Now, after discussing models and two methods let's talk about what impedance the driver will see into the transmission line if there is a plane between signal and ground so from the two methods one is the eddy current way and coupling capacitors way that we got to know the current will be flowing in series so that means the total impedance between layer 1 and layer 3 will be is equal to the impedance between layer 1 and layer 2 plus the impedance between layer 2 and layer 3. Alright, so till here we got to know about return current path if we insert a plane. Now what we'll do with all this information? What is the application of that? So let's talk about the very first point. So first point is by choosing the coupling between these layers, we can control the width of the impedance of impedance control track. For example, the smaller the impedance between plane 2 and 3 or Z23, the thicker the signal track will be. So sometimes we face this problem while we are routing some very thinner track which are not manufacturable in real world. So to make them thicker, we have to implement this method. We have to reduce the coupling between planes so we can make them more thicker and manufacturable. So this is the first application. And the second application is selection of layer stack up. So as you can see, we have two layer stack up and the clear difference is one, one has the little bit thicker prepeg and stack up two has little bit thinner prepeg, which is 0.1 mm and 0.2 mm. So the case one is, let's suppose we're going to route our high speed track or impedance controls track on the top layer. So in that case, which layer stack up is good? Obviously the second layer stack up. So in this case, second layer stack up is good for routing high speed track. If we are going to route it on the top layer, because there will be more coupling between top layer and inner copper layer, which is ground. All right. So generally for four layer, we use this configuration, ground signal, power and signal. All right. Now another case is, let's suppose I am planning to route high speed tracks or impedance controlled track on the bottom layer. So for that case, which layer stack up is better? So we have to simply add up this thickness and 
this thickness and we can compare which one is higher. So if we'll add up this thickness, it will be approx 1.2 something and this will be approx 1.3. So obviously in that case, we're going to, if we are routing on the bottom layer, then first layer stack up is good for that. All right. So this is another application where you can implement this, whatever we have learned in this video to estimate if we are routing on inner layer, top layer, or bottom layer, which stack up is better, right? If we have a power plane or, you know, couple of more planes between signal and ground. Now let's talk about how we can estimate the impedance between planes. So for that, we use simple formula, which is Z0 is equal to 377 divided by square root of epsilon r, which should be effective dielectric constant multiplied by height or gap between the planes divided by its width. So using this formula, we can able to estimate the impedance between the planes. Now let's conclude this video with this statement that to maintain rail collapse or to minimize rail collapse, and to put return current path close to signal layer, these middle planes or power planes should be tightly coupled with ground.